Hello, I'm Ralph Gable of The Electronics for the Inquisitive Experimenter YouTube channel. I recently had someone ask me, well, what is all this business of the series and parallel values shown in the Nano VNA Saver program, Rig Expert, and other devices or programs? Now, that is a good question. That is exactly what this video is all about, answering this very question. For those interested in all the math, Look down in the description for the link to a PDF containing all the math for your interest. If you have questions or comments, please feel free to add a comment to this video. If you find this video helpful, please click on the like and don't forget to subscribe. Now, to truly understand what is going on, I'm going to have to lay some foundations. When you use your nano VNA or even your antenna analyzer to measure an impedance, this impedance is reported in the form of some real value or pure ideal resistance and some imaginary value or pure ideal reactance. It is in the form impedance equals R plus Jx. Now remembering basic electronic circuit analysis, the value of a series combination of two resistive components is found by adding the two values together. So the total resistance is equal to R1 plus R2. Now when we consider the equation for impedance, the R term is a pure ideal resistance, as I just said. The Jx term is the AC equivalent and resides in the reactive realm. Thus, the expression impedance equals R plus Jx is telling us that we have some pure ideal resistive component in series with a pure ideal reactive component. Now, this is a composite impedance, which is the total effect of all of the various things that make up the device being measured. The resistive part could actually be made up of a number of resistive components, including wire and contact resistance. The reactive portion is also a combination of things such as wire inductance, stray capacitance, parasitic capacitance and inductance, and other things. The overall reactance of the combination of all of these factors is boiled down into a single effective X value that we see here. The R term is the series R, and the X term is the series X, and this value is frequency dependent. Now, that was the easy part. I think this is what everyone has really no issue understanding. The real question is, what is this parallel R and parallel X stuff? Well, suppose we had a 1K ohm resistor and a 2K ohm resistor in series. The total equivalent resistance would be 1K ohm plus 2K ohm or 3 kilo ohms. We are looking at this combination of resistors in a black box. We don't see the resistors. All we see is a black box and two leads hanging out that we connected to in order to measure the overall value. That same resistance could also be the result of two resistors in parallel. One such combination is a 12K ohm resistor in parallel with a 4K ohm resistor. And this would produce the same 3K ohm result as measured on our two leads. The parallel R and the parallel X are the values of the components that we would need to produce the same impedance assuming that these two components were in parallel instead of series. But this same result of an equivalent 3K ohms could also be had with a 76K ohm resistor in parallel with a 3.123K ohm resistor or a myriad of values all resulting in the same equivalent 3K ohms. That being the case, how do they come up with two definitive values for parallel R and parallel X components? Well, unlike the purely resistive example, the impedance has both magnitude and phase associated with it. The magnitude and phase of the parallel equivalent components must be the same as the series components, and this is what dictates the exact value of our parallel components. So why does this work? Well, there are two ways to define what's going on when it comes to resistance. 
We can define it in terms of resistance. Yes, that's what we're used to doing. But we also can define it in terms of conductance, which speaks to the tendency to conduct electricity as opposed to the property of how it resists the flow of electricity. The inverse of resistance is conductance, and its units are in moles. Yes, it's ohms spelled backwards. It is represented by the letter G. When we have two resistors in series, we typically add the resistances to arrive at a total resistance. This is because the opposition to the flow of electricity increases with the addition of resistive components in series. Now, let's think for a moment about components in parallel. The more resistors we put in parallel, the lower the resistance. This means that the assembly is increasing in conductance, the tendency to allow current to flow. So in this case, instead of adding the resistances of the resistors, we add the conductances of the resistors. And to get the final equivalent resistance, we have to convert this total conductance back into resistance by dividing it into one. And this is exactly what we're doing when we use the standard formula for resistors in parallel. One divided by one over R1 plus one over R2 plus one over R3 and so on and so forth. One over R1 is the conductance of R1. One over R2 is the conductance of R2 and so on and so forth. So the denominator is nothing more than the sum of the conductances of the resistors. The same process is true when we're talking about impedance. In the AC world, we talk about admittance, which is represented by the letter Y. It is found by dividing one by the impedance. The admittance is expressed in the form of Y is equal to G plus JB, where G is the conductance and B is the susceptance Susceptance is the AC equivalent to conductance in a similar fashion that reactance is the AC equivalent to resistance. It is represented by the letter B and can be found by dividing one by the reactance. So B is equal to one divided by X. When we have impedances in parallel, we can add their admittances just like we added the conductances of resistors in parallel. In the same way, if we divide one by the total impedance, then we end up with the sum of the two conductive aspects that make up the impedance, the conductance and the susceptance. Thus, the previously mentioned Y equals G plus JB. If we then individually convert the conductance G to resistance R, and the susceptance B to reactance X, then we get the component values that make up the parallel combination that results in the measured impedance. We can then convert the reactance value to a component value at the frequency that the impedance was measured at. Now, don't forget to include the sign of the parallel X in your calculation. A negative X value is capacitive, so we use the capacitive reactance formula to calculate the capacitor value. If the sign is positive, then the X is inductive and we use the inductive reactance formula to calculate the inductance value. So how do we actually get definitive values like we see on the screen? Well, there are four ways to arrive at these values. And the first and easiest way to do this is to use the following canned formulas. The parallel equivalent resistance is equal to the series resistance squared plus the series reactance squared, all divided by the series resistance. The parallel equivalent reactance is equal to the series resistance squared plus the series reactance squared, all divided by the series reactance. Or you could translate the impedance to admittance, then individually translate the conductance and susceptance to resistance and reactance. I'm not going to do this here. If you're interested in this, then I encourage you to check out the math document that I've provided. The link is in the description. 
Or you could use a Smith chart to translate the impedance to admittance, and then again individually translate the conductance and susceptance to resistance and reactance, just like I talked about before. But as before, I'm not going to do this here. I've provided detailed instructions on how to do this in the math document. The link, like I said, is down in the description for you. And finally, well, if you happen to like heavy duty math, you could go through all of the heavy lifting with the trigonometric identities and the like to calculate the values. This is by far the hardest one requiring some rather obscure trigonometric identities. I've stepped through all of this math in the affirmation math document. So why do I even care about this? This parallel equivalent resistance and reactance gives us opportunities to simplify the process of coming up with ways to achieve our impedance goals for matching and modification. To help us understand this, let me go back to the network of parallel resistors. Now, we added conductances together to get the total conductance and then converted it to resistance to get our total equivalent resistance. What if, instead of thinking in terms of resistance, we think of this same scenario in terms of conductance? We have in mind the conductance that we're looking to achieve. We want to achieve this conductance by adding a resistor in parallel with whatever circuit is there. We would simply subtract the conductance of the existing circuit from our target conductance to get the conductance we need to add to achieve our goal. Well, here's a case in point. I have a circuit of various resistors and things with present to me a resistance of 4K ohms. My goal is to make this look like a 3K ohm resistor by adding some resistance in parallel. The conductance of my 4K ohm network is 1 divided by 4,000 or 0.25 millimoles. My target conductance is 1 divided by 3,000 or 0.3333333 millimoles. So I need a conductance of 0.3333333 millimoles minus 0.25 millimoles, which gives me 0.083333 millimoles to accomplish this task. Well, what does this come out to be in terms of resistance? Well, resistance is equal to 1 over the conductance, so that's 1 divided by 0 0.083333 millimoles, or 12,000 ohms. And this is a lot easier than having to solve this equation for the value of R. In a similar fashion, these parallel R and parallel X values are provided to help us in these sorts of calculations only in the impedance admittance realm. If, for instance, I measured the impedance to be 120 plus J75, and I wanted to add something to this to give me a nice 50 ohms, well, how do we do this? We can view this in one of two ways. We can see this in terms of some impedance in parallel with the measured series impedance of RS plus JXS. This would give us a fixed impedance of 1 divided by 1 over 50 minus 1 over RS plus JXS. You could also see this in terms of some impedance in parallel with the parallel resistance RP and the parallel reactance XP. This gives us a fixed impedance of 1 divided by 1 over 50 minus 1 over RP plus J1 over XP. In the case of my example, I came up with a fixed impedance of 66.63 minus J17.8. That means that I would have a 66.63 ohm resistor in series with an 893.4 picofarad capacitor at 10 megahertz. Well, I don't know if I totally demystified it all or just confused you, but I hope that I've given you some food for thought and maybe pencil and paper to play with it all. If you found this video helpful, please click on the like and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. 
Until next time, toodaloots.